Lust is one of the biggest things we as teenagers struggle with. By definition, lust is simply a passionate desire for something. For example, a person. As a teenager, I found myself mindlessly snapping, texting, scrolling, and without knowing. These were symptoms of the root problem. So, hey, my name is David, and in this particular episode, I'll go over the reason why we as human beings encounter lust and how we can defeat it. I'll never look at the problem of lust the same without this one key point. When you encounter lust and turn someone into an object of your own selfish desires, it is then because of a complete lack of love in your heart. We need to first be able to recognize that our hearts are unloving and repent. The root problem to your lust is that your heart is so empty of love that it manipulates you to think that it's found in another person. Even so to the point that you turn them into an object. This is a very deep and sensitive topic, but I myself as a teenager have struggled with this. But by becoming a new creation in Christ and crucifying my old self, I have been winning the war against lust with the help of Christ who is my strength. Philippians 4.13 This topic on social media and the internet has been oversaturated because of the fact that so many videos on this topic have been uploaded and talked about, but the question still stands. Why is it still a problem? The first step to defeat lust is to recognize that it is an internal problem and that it can only be solved from within. The fact that you clicked on this video means that you had the itch in your heart that you do in fact struggle with or have encountered lust and know that it isn't a good thing. After you recognize that the root problem of lust is because of an unloving heart, the next step is to repent. A non-Christian or even a Christian would ask, what is repentance? Well, in simple terms, repentance is the changing of your mind from one thing to another. In this case, it is changing your mind from lustful, sinful, and selfish thoughts and desires to the things above ourselves. Recognize that we as human beings are going to sin. It's our nature. But every time we do sin, we need to have a plan to reconcile with God. Even as non-Christians, you must come to the conclusion that the answers in which the world provides as a solution to lust is temporary. Anyway, the way you repent is to first recognize that you have sinned. Then ask yourself questions like, why am I feeling lust at this moment? Pray to God and then change your focus on something else. By the way, this is how you repent for any sin you have committed. A sin is just missing the mark of God's law. Many of us avoid confronting our own problems and find that change is hard because of our little bubble we all live in. But let's move on. James 1.14 But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. If James says that we are dragged away by our own evil desires, we must then remove the things that trigger temptation within us. The thing is that most people do not want to admit that social media is one of the leading causes of temptation and falling into the sin of lust. As a Christian myself, I've coped and have put aside this core issue and fed my fleshly desires with apps like Snapchat and Instagram. I knew the wisest thing to do was to get rid of it, but as a teenager, I knew that if I did, I would feel lonely because I already had the constant urge to open the apps and see what's happening with other people. But I came to the conclusion that as soon as I stopped texting first, I would see how many dead plants I have been watering rough. So what did I do? First things first, I deleted Snapchat because I knew it had to go because it was the biggest cope. But on the other hand, I have kept Instagram because I still wanted to connect with people. But at the same time, I unfollowed everyone who I don't know. Like big influencers, people that don't follow me back, brands, and organizations. Also by doing this, you will find out that the people who you thought that are your friends 
don't actually care about you unless you text first or start the interaction. So stop wasting time and focus on the grind. It's you and God. With all that being said, temptation is always lurking. And by removing the triggers that cause you to fall into lust, progress is made. And slowly but surely, you will start to win the war. Matthew 26, 41 Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Whenever you encounter the spirit of lust, you need to realize that it is attacking your flesh, your body. The second thing you need to grasp is that to win the battle against lust by yourself is impossible, even with the solutions that the world offers. But you, as a person who now recognizes that lust is not a good thing, the solution is ultimately prayer and running to God. Even as a non-Christian, become aware of the fact that you can't win the battle of lust by yourself, and that you do need the power of God to work inside of you. So when you are in a situation where you are being tempted, realize that you are being tempted and throw your phone, which may be your trigger, and get on the ground and start by asking God for a new heart, a new mind, and a new perspective. The simplest thing you can do is pray. Nothing complicated, just you and God. He is willing to guide and aid you. The verdict of this video is that you cannot solve your own problem of lust by yourself and that God needs to intervene in your life to be able to deliver you from evil. I myself as a Christian testify that it does work and that it is a process that takes time. So those who are serious about the sin of lust will be able to break free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do the hard work because the job isn't finished. Come on!